Hello and welcome to a new Spirit of Nature art video series. A special one as this is to celebrate two years of me having my YouTube channel um, and also to celebrate we are going to be doing a collaboration project which is fantastic, feels great, uh, a bit of a duet um, to celebrate the two years. Um, Ruby has joined us today. She, Ruby is sitting on my art desk. So this is where I normally sit here in this chair. Uh, I am normally sat here with this. I'm not going to open it right now because there's a surprise in there. Um, and here we have, this is where my camera normally sits. But I thought it'd be good for you to see what you don't normally get to see, which is the bit behind the desk. So here we go. That's my shop up here. So everything in here is either available already up on my shop or it's nearly there or it's there waiting for somebody to come and collect it. And this is the other area that I work at a lot. So this desk here is also a fold down desk. And this is often where I will do a lot of my mass makes because I can stand here and do that. So you'll see at the moment I have in here, I'm making, I've got 14 of these little journals to make for an event in January. Uh, they've got these little double kind of like waterfalls in. Um, so that's something that I am working on at the moment. Uh, and then also I wanted to just show you, because this is the bit I get so many questions about. This is part of my stack of books. People always ask me, where do I get my books with all the beautiful illustrations in? Um, this, uh, this is double um, deep, so there's another stash behind this one here. Um, I get most of my books either from charity shops, maybe like two pounds each. Um, or a lot of these books I got for free in house clearances. So this is where you will find me a lot of the time. Uh, and yes, <laughs> Ruby's decided that she's going to be our, our special guest today. Um, so now you know what it's, uh, where I am when I am doing my work, when you're watching me recording my videos, this is where I am. And as I said, this new project is a bit special because it's celebrating two years of my YouTube channel, but also it's a special collaboration. So let's take a little dive into my art desk and find out what we are going to be working on. So here we are right at the beginning of a new altered book project and this one I wanted to be something a little bit special to celebrate two years of YouTube. Uh, and so I had this idea in my head that what I wanted to do was do something that kind of pulled together all of the things that have uh, been on my channel over the last two years. So altered books, folio journals, mixed media, flippy flappy little places where we put lots of little kind of cute little note cards and tags and journaling spots. So I had this idea that I wanted to make a kind of altered book slash lap book slash, slash kind of folio journal mixed media project type thing. Um, and I picked out a few books that I thought thought I might like to use. Um, I've got some smaller books here. All of these books are ones that um, have got things in that I'm, you know, I'm destined to to kind of take the information out of these books anyway. I'm destined to kind of gut them for the images, um, so they would give me good frames to be able to create the kind of lap book style that I'm looking for. And I was starting to think about the style of it and the artwork of it when I had a message through Instagram from one of my favorite artists. Um, and um, she suggested sending me some of her art to use in Create My Next Altered Book. So my idea and that offer of, uh, of that beautiful artwork kind of came together and collided into this idea 
uh, that I want to try and bring to life now. So let me just move these books out of the way for a moment so that I can show you what arrived in the post earlier this week. Oh my gosh, okay. So this package here arrived from the amazing Rachel Tribble, uh, who's based in Florida, the most amazing artist, and no surprise um, to you guys will be that her work is, is very much nature-based. So when I opened this package, I honestly was almost, I was so overwhelmed, I, I just almost couldn't speak, um, because this is what I've got to work with. yeah I don't even know where to start this this kind of package just keeps going on it keeps giving I've got all of these these wonderful cards I've got some great ideas as to what I want to do with these we've got lots of dragonflies butterflies trees and swirls I mean come on guys you've seen the work that I do <laughs> you, this is right up my street this kind of art isn't it all these beautiful flowers look at the and the colors as well just totally are my colors when I showed this to uh, to my husband Mark he was just like well it couldn't have been a better match really could it so <laughs> Rachel has given me full permission to do what I do, which is cut things up and cut things out and stick them back together in a completely different way. Um, Rachel's instructions to me were to breathe fresh life into these, uh, and which of course is what I love doing with my books. That's why I work on altered books, to bring fresh life back into them. So after sort of spending a long time unpacking this beautiful package i mean gosh look at this i have to um well my first of all my head was absolutely spinning with ideas um my heart was just singing because just looking at this i'm just so excited to work with it all um we've got some beautiful kind of more kind of sea sea creatures here as well which might i might use that in a slightly different project i'm just still i'm kind of thinking maybe i might do something a bit gardeny i might do like a garden enchanted garden with the butterflies and the dragonflies and the and the plants um but yeah i have to kind of get over myself here and actually cut into these things um it's a bit like when you get one of those beautiful kind of you know like stamperia or graphic 45 uh, kind of paper pads and you just look at it and go oh my gosh isn't it beautiful and you stroke it um, and then you put it away because you can't bear to cut it up <laughs> um, but actually that's the purpose of this this is this is why Rachel has sent this stuff to me so I've already got some ideas of what I want to be doing with this and how this might integrate into my idea of this kind of flippy flappy lap book style altered book so um and, you know just thinking about oh where are they you know thinking about some of these cards in terms of creating kind of flaps pockets folders things like that so but that really is about as far as i've got i don't really have much more of a plan other than what i have just told you so it's a kind of make it up as we go along and so if you guys want to make along with me, what I would suggest is that you find yourself a book. Um, and I'm going to put the links to Rachel's amazing work below. Rachel has an amazing Instagram account. She also has a fantastic Etsy store. So if you did want to make along with me, you could actually make along with me. Um, but equally, I know if you're anything like me, and this is sort of where my brain had already been going before Rachel got in touch with me. If you're anything like me, you have a drawer, don't you? With all those beautiful cards in that you buy when you go into those art galleries or those garden centres or those lovely gift stores. And when you see beautiful cards like this and you think, oh, do you know what? That's so lovely. I'm going to buy that. And that'll be perfect to give to somebody for any occasion because it hasn't got any sentiments on it. And then you put it and go home and you put it in the drawer and it's so nice you never actually use it and you never give it to anyone 
So if you've got a drawer like that, then go and have a look at what you've got in there because actually that might be perfect for following along with a project like this. But quite frankly, any paper you've got, any cards you've got, magazines, whatever, this is just gonna be a bit of a play along. Let's look and see what we can create from this beautiful, beautiful package that Rachel has um, has sent. I mean, I'm, I'm honestly just totally blown away and overwhelmed and also really excited and can't wait to get started. But of course, before I start doing anything with this lot, I have to decide on what book I'm gonna use and I have to prepare the book so that we're ready to start doing the exciting book, which is the preparation. So, hmm. and also I wanna make two books because I wanna send one back to Rachel. So this is a really nice, lovely exchange. I had originally been thinking about using one of these two books. Um, this is what I had in mind before Rachel got in touch with me. I love this, Easter 1947. Um, and this is already about kind of gardens and these beautiful pictures here. Um, but now I've seen Rachel's cards, if I want to do a flippy, flappy, pockety thing, this book's not quite big enough. So the other option I was looking at oh, was this big one. This is a big thick one. And I thought, you know what, for a lap book, this will be really good because it gives you a lot of depth in here. But it's also quite big and heavy. Um, I mean, obviously it's not gonna be so heavy when I gut it and turn it into a, into a lap book, but mm, I'm still not sure, I'm still not 100% convinced. I love this paper, by the way. So even if I'm not using this book as the basis, uh, I may well <laughs> take this paper out um, and use it. And again, it's just about wide enough. I mean, I'm not necessarily going to be using these cards as they are, but this gives me a, a kind of a bit of an idea of size and how things might come together. And then I thought about this one. I quite like this one. This is actually the Concise British Flora in colour. So this one was one, I can't remember where I picked this up from now. Um, probably eBay, I think. I These images this this book is destined to be completely gutted so i can use all of these these beautiful images anyway so um ultimately at some point this book will only be cover so i thought well do you know what this one might make a really nice one to use for this project because it's um it's quite a nice size it means that whatever i want to do if i want to cut these down or even if i don't want to cut these down I've got enough space to be able to to use it. This size is is nice because it's not too big, but it's big enough. If you see what I mean. I've got small hands, so I don't want anything too big to work on. And also if it's too big, I'll be working on it for about six months. Um, and I have a feeling this is gonna be quite a big project anyway. So I think I'm gonna go with this book. It also feels really nice in my hands as well, which, you know, that's a big one for me when I'm choosing a book to work with. Does it feel nice? quite a tactile person and actually it does so and the cover do you know what even if I didn't do anything on this cover it's quite nice but I think I will be but yeah I think I'm going to go for this book and I think I'm going to go much more for the garden kind of theme rather than the sea creature theme so uh, I've got an idea for the first page that I want to do so I think that's about as far as I got in terms of planning so First things first, we need to get this book prepped. Okay, so this book's pretty good condition, which is the other reason why I chose it, because the spine's in really good condition. It's not damaged at all. Um, so that gives me a really good base to start with. Um, and what we're gonna want to do is to take all these pages out, I'm afraid. So what we're gonna do is, Let's see what I'm doing here. See where we've got this back page here. I'm just going to, I know I get lots of questions from people say, why do you cut the books up, Caroline? Why don't you just scan them and then use the images? Well, apart from the kind of copyright issues, for me, when I'm working with books, 
it is about what Rachel said when she sent me her artwork. It's about breathing new life into them. I pick most of these books up from um, house clearances or charity shops. You know, they've been discarded. The house, the ones from house clearances, if I don't pick them up, they'll end up in landfill, which is really sad. But they've been sat on bookshelves, not read, not looked at for decades. And often when you do find them for sale, they are sold in colour batches. Here's a batch of 20 green books to create your instant library at home. So it's a home decor thing, rather than them being actually used, picked up, used, handled, interacted with. And I think for me, that's what books are for. They're about being interacted with, picked up, being used, about, you know, it, it just seems a shame that they just sit on the shelf because so much of the information, unfortunately, is kind of out of date now. Um, and even if someone were to buy this book secondhand, quite likely it ends up on the shelf and not actually being used for the intended purpose. So I like being able to turn these, kind of give, give them back that life, turning these books that feel like they've lost their purpose, they've, they've lost that kind of value in life and turning them into something that's interactive that people want to pick up and use on a kind of daily or weekly basis, which is why I like turning my books into, into journals. So never fear this, <laughs> the contents here, we'll probably see this again in this project. Uh, I have a few other projects that I'm working on at the moment that may well require some of these pages, but this will all get used. It will all get repurposed into uh, another or into this art journal. So you can see now we have our base, which is why it's nice that this is in such good condition. And we will reinforce the spine here. And the other thing I'm going to do, because this is going to be a lap book, is what we want to do is to create two more flaps that flap out here as well. I'm doing that and you probably can't see what I'm doing. Let me zoom you out a little bit. So we want two more flaps that flap out. Um, and we also want to add a bit of a, um, a bit of a spine to them so that we've got space when they flap in, we've got space for them to have things underneath them. So it's just like a normal kind of folio journal, really. Let me grab one and show you what I mean. Okay, so here we have a folio uh, journal that I have made that is in my shop. Um, and so if we open this up, this is just like a, like a book just like this and then when we open it let's take the journal out so we open it up like that and then it opens up again so we've got more space and we've got these little spines here so that we can fit more little things in so when you look at it like this these two spines here add up almost to this spine here so that we can add in not only a journal, but some tuck spots and things as well without it having to kind of stretch and damage the spine. So that's the kind of thing we're going to do here. So we are going to create more flaps that come out here and possibly even further um, so that we create that kind of lap book style. If you've never seen a lap book before, I highly recommend going over to see Nick the Booksmith's channel and looking at her lap book series. Just, she's like the queen of lap books. Um, so there's going to be a lot of inspiration that I've taken from uh, from Nick that gets incorporated, in, incorporated into this. Um, and of course, the biggest thing that's going to get incorporated into this is all of that beautiful, beautiful artwork from Rachel. So we are going to reinforce the spine with an extra piece of card. I did wonder about using another book, taking like the front and back covers to create the flaps but to be honest with you they're going to be so covered with so much stuff it's almost a I could use that book to create another lap book um, so what I'm going to do to create those those flaps and those uh, those mini spines is just use some um, some uh, bookboard some grey card um, that's kind of similar thickness to this 
and it's just going to mean we've got twice as much fun, twice as much space to work with, uh, and that extra width that we get from those mini spines that we're going to incorporate here. Okay, so here is what we have. I have cut two equal sized pieces that match the size of the front and back. I have cut a piece that is the width, let's go in the spine to reinforce the spine. And what I've done is I have cut another piece and halved it. So we can create the small spines over here. So I measured that. Of course, your measures are going to be completely different based on what size book you've got. But for example, this spine piece here, the lighter green bit, I'm not including the darker green bit here, which is the book tape, but that lighter green bit in the middle there, the bit that I'm reinforcing was 26 centimetres. No, it wasn't. <laughs> it was 2.6 centimetres, obviously. Um, so what I've done is created two pieces here that are 13 mil. Oh, God, honestly, please don't ask me to measure. I am, I'm dyspraxic, so numbers measuring just never going to work. But anyway, it's half the size of the spine because what we want is these two halves, ba -ba -ba, half here, half here, that will match up to the same width there. So when, let me show you. So when this is here and this is here and taped together, this will fold in and that will create the spine so that what we end up with are two spines here that meet in the middle each with a flappy what's it on it if that makes sense <laughs> so I'm going to get my book taken I think it'll make more sense once I have actually taped it together and you'll be able to see what we've got so let me do that
So here we go. This is where we are at. So the thing to think about at this point is not to worry about what it looks like because it's all going to get covered over. So we have got a flap on this side and we've got a flap on this side and yet everything is going to get covered up. I haven't fitted the spine in place yet because I'm not sure which order I want to put papers and things in so I'm just kind of like leaving that there right now and I will decide how I'm going to fit that in the end and then this folds together and it gives us this so we have this lap book style base to work on now so now we can start doing the exciting bits which is starting to think about how we can use Rachel's amazing art to really turn this into something amazing and special and there may well still be more flip outs from uh from some of these flaps and folders i don't know yet i'm not sure we've got plenty of space that's why we've put these extra spines here whoopsie that's why we've put these extra spines here so it gives us plenty of space to be able to add material in so whatever goes in here does not have to be flat we've got some give we can put you know waterfalls we can put pockets we can put more journals lots of things that we can put in there so that is the base of the book done and now i'm going to go away and start thinking about the first page that we are going to do here mm, not sure which one it might be yet i think we'll probably go for one of the inside ones but watch the space you will find out <laughs> 